Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. I have a very special guest on Forbidden Planet TV, direct from the House of Ideas in Manhattan. It is Marvel Comics executive editor and senior vice president of publishing, the man who knows more about the Marvel Universe than any living soul on the planet, Mr. Tom Brevoort. How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, thank you. I'm great. It's great to see you again, man. And um, I know you, you, we've uh, we've just had a, a long chat off camera about some interesting projects. But what we're here to talk about right now is it's 2022. Um, it's a very interesting 2022 for Marvel Comics. <laughs> what have you got that you can tell me about on your upcoming projects for 2022, Tom? Well, we've, I mean, we've obviously got a lot of things and I'm going to focus most heavily on things that I'm more directly involved with. Uh, but that doesn't mean there's not important stuff going on in the worlds of X-Men or Spider-Man or, or whatever. Um, in the, in the, uh, in the Avengers books, uh, we just launched uh, Avengers Forever, the second Avengers title, uh, which Jason Aaron is writing and Aaron Cooter and friends are, are illustrating. Um, and that pretty much is when I call it a sister title to Avengers, it really is that for all that it's it's remit is to deal more uh, with the multiverse as a larger concept. Um, in Avengers 50, we introduced the Masters of Evil, the new iteration of the Masters of Evil, who are assembled from the most uh, villainous and despicable versions of the big Marvel villains from across the multiverse. So it's not just Dr. Doom, it's the worst version of Dr. Doom, and it's not just Thanos, it's the worst version of Thanos. Um, and the thing that, uh, that, that they are doing, uh, their plan and, and larger ongoing scheme, which has been put into uh, motion by Mephisto, who has been a, a running presence in Avengers since the beginning, uh, is large enough that between these two titles, we're going to see it converge from multiple points of view until eventually at the end of the year, everything will collide in a big catastrophic uh, 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 holocaust. Um, you know, the two books can be read separately somewhat, <laughs> but they do intertwine in, in interesting ways. And really uh, the best reading experience, I think, is to be following both of them as we, as we go along. Brilliant. Um, elsewhere, uh, over in uh, in the world of Fantastic Four, now that we've we've hit 2022, we're finally getting to do uh, the Reckoning War, which is uh, a big storyline that uh, Dan Slott had come up with at this point, literally 15 years ago. Like he's had the the nugget of the idea forever, uh, and he's actually been seeding little bits and pieces of stuff that we'll use in this storyline. Um, you know, all the way through any number of projects that he's written in the past. Um, but even if you haven't read, you know, every book that Dan has ever written, because really who has, um, you know, hopefully we provide a clean enough entree point in the, the Fantastic Four Reckoning War number one, uh, and then you can, you can carry through and follow it. It's a big uh, cosmic story that's steeped in the origins of the Marvel Universe itself. It's very Fantastic Four centric. You know, put those characters through their paces and through some changes uh, and, and uh, you know, end it with an interesting result uh, when all is said and done. Yeah, great. And then uh, it, it, is, it is worth, as, as we're beginning to get to the end of the first year of uh, Kieran Gillen and Esad Ribic's Eternals, uh, they, they will be uh, uh, em, embroiled in a conflict with the Avengers in uh, issues 10, 11, and 12. Uh, and, and that is a, a conflict that will have a greater and more lasting ramifications throughout the Marvel Universe. Um, we'll see a little bit more of that as we move into uh, uh, our release for Free Comic Book Day, um, which will, will give people uh, a clear signpost as to exactly where that story and and where the marvel universe as a whole is is headed um uh, but i i can't reveal anything more about it yet we're, we're not ready to announce exactly what all of that is and what it's all about um and then finally starting in uh march 
uh, and a, a project that we've been working on for uh, a, a very long time is the new iteration of the Punisher. Um, and that's Jason Aaron and Jesus Saiz and Paul Azaceta. And uh, the best way I've been able to describe it to people so that they can understand what it is, is we set out to craft a story that was to Frank Castle, sort of what Born Again was to Daredevil. Um, I'm not necessarily saying it's the exact same story. Certainly the Punisher is not gonna blow up Frank's building in, in the course of it. But in the same way that Born Again was a transformative experience for Matt Murdock and for Daredevil as a series. Um, this Punisher run will serve to, to uh, redefine uh, and, and change Frank Castle in very meaningful ways. Um, it's, it's 12 issues long. Uh, each of the issues is oversized, 30 to 35 pages of story. Um, and uh, uh, it's uh, Jesus Saiz, is, has been uh, producing just amazing, uh, uh, bloody and ridiculous uh, 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 pages in the course of it. It delves very deeply into Frank Castle's youth and upbringing and history as we learn the various forces throughout his life that, that, that guided him to becoming the Punisher even before the deaths of his family in that Central Park shooting. Um, and you know, we're, we're, we're really trying to make something that is a, uh, uh, an enormous touchstone for the character, like I say, like like Born Again. It's too early for me to really make that comparison because Born Again is clearly Born Again, and, and a lot of people have tried to do stories like that and haven't uh, managed it. But uh, that is our goal, and that is our, in, our intention here uh, with the series. Um, so it, it too is is significant and not to be missed. Um, and I could just go on and on about stuff. It's the anniversary year of both uh, Thor and the Hulk uh, and so Donny Cates and uh, his various artist collaborators. Uh, since he is writing both of those titles, he's gonna be doing a storyline that, that brings the two characters into, into conflict and, and contention. And that is called Banner of War. Um, Brilliant. We've all that seen... is a great title, mate. It's wonderful. It is. That's, that's uh, you know, well, Donny is, Donny is, a, is, a, is a very clever uh, fellow. Um, and and that, is, uh, that, that is a storyline that while well, it will kick off in a one shot, We'll run through the the ongoing monthly Thor and Hulk titles for for the duration. So uh, it's not a separate thing necessarily. It'll all it'll all exist there. Um, beyond that, we'll have a bunch of uh, a bunch of different uh, series and ideas spinning out of the climax of Chip Zdarsky and Marco Caquetto's Devil's Reign. Uh, we're working on on those right now that that's such um, a great book i had chip on recently uh talking about that and um i think they're just doing great work with those characters yeah they they really are uh, marco marco in particular has sort of uh, uh really stepped up and and come into his own there artistically uh i think he's he's very strong and chip i've always liked uh you know for years and years going back to uh the stuff that we did in the past in daters and marvel two and one and uh, yeah, things of that nature, Spider-Man Life Story. Um, oh, that's a wonderful book, Spider-Man Life Story. So good. Well, 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 well thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope you also liked the Fantastic Four Life Story, which is wrapping up, I think, this week. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure, mate. I think you guys have been on a roll with that, with the, with, with those particular approaches. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Punisher fan from way back, so I can't wait to see what's, what's, what's happening with this book, but. I think uh, I think you must be you must feel very proud, Tom, at the the level of quality you've maintained at Marvel over the last decade. Well, uh, yes, uh, but I don't spend a lot of time looking backwards at that. I'm much more concerned about trying to maintain the quality for next month. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the 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 point at which you're 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 sort of you know stepping back and. And, and taking accolades for all the great work you've done is is the point where you take your eye off the ball and and you stop being uh, relevant or stop being quite as conscious of of making that extra effort to make the books as good as they can be i mean i i think that's very humble very wise and in fact the only strategy because you know self congratulation is the enemy of, of creativity right right so i appreciate it when when you know folks like yourself who are are, are you know readers and and uh, enjoyers of the work we're doing say these things uh that's always very gratifying but i kind of 
it, it, it needs to wash off of me the minute it's done because uh, I need to I need to focus on uh, whatever the next set of stories is. Now, now to close on talking about the past, how, how many years have you been at Marvel for now, Tom? Uh, this is year 33. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, and uh, uh, the, one of the reasons I asked you that question, because, of course, you know, throughout your time at Marvel, you, you, you've, 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 you've had this incredibly wild ride over the last 13, 14 years with the creation of the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And to see Marvel comic books go from being something that were, you know, a slice of pop culture um appreciated by many but you know not being a sort of a, a major cultural force in the sense that say movies or mm -hmm. or sports were just to being you know one of the most all pervasive elements of global culture and, and now of course you know re reading marvel comics and appreciating everything that marvel comics is um sits beside appreciating sports and football games and baseball and <laughs> soccer you know and you know i'm from liverpool in the north of england and i distinctly remember growing up in the 60s and sitting on trains where i'll be reading my be reading my spider-man comics but i'd be surrounded by people going to the soccer match the liverpool soccer match yeah and there would be sometimes some tension about the fact that I was reading a comic book, you know, and now, you know, you sit on the tube in London, the guys going into the city, you know, to work on their financial jobs. I've got the pinstripe suit on and they're sitting there reading, you know, Spider-Man life story or they're sitting there reading. <laughs> and it's just, I, I just, you know, Marvel, no pun intended, having been such a lifelong fan, having worked in comics for so long, that are now living in this world where it's just become such a major facet of our lives. And that to you, as it is to me, must be an amazing feeling. Oh, well, uh, well, definitely. It's certainly, it's certainly nicer to be accepted than, than to be uh, uh, yeah, ridiculed for, for the things that, 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 that you like and care about. So uh, I can't necessarily claim any, any particular part of that. I think that, uh, you know, certainly the, the Marvel Studios team, Kevin Feige and, and his crew, uh, really deserve the the lion's share of that uh, uh, transformation of the cultural landscape simply because uh, you know their films have just a much greater range of cultural impact than than uh, what we do. But the fact that they've remained so true to the essences of those characters and uh, the Marvel experience as a whole means it does translate over in, into our world. And it is kind of you know amazing to, to think that you know we don't just live in a world where your grandmother knows who iron man is uh she knows who groot is she knows who rocket raccoon is uh right. and, and and you know the most obscure uh, characters uh you know i was talking with somebody the other week and we were marveling at the fact that there's going to be a moon knight tv show <laughs> yeah. people are going to know who moon knight is uh and 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 that just you know it keeps compounding itself as every uh, you know every other major release happens, uh, and and this stuff just permeates out uh, further. Um, certainly, uh, you know the the promise that uh, Stanley you know put forward in the in the sixties and thereafter about you know Marvel slowly taking over the world and 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 becoming this cultural force has been largely borne out and hopefully will will continue to spread until it overwhelms and engulfs everything no it's, it's so true mate you know i was thinking that uh in the year before iron man came out i think there were probably at best four comic masked comic book or superhero comic book characters who their alter egos were known by the general public so everybody knew who bruce wayne was who clark kent was and peter park was maybe a bunch of people knew who diana prince was um right but that was pretty much it because even even the hulk back then is widely it was widely known as if anybody knew who the hulk's identity was they thought it was david banner not david bruce banner, banner. Yeah. And, yeah and and yet one you know one year after iron man comes out and now, ten years, fourteen years later, everyone knows who Tony Stark is. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's just amazing yeah. to me that Tony Stark has a name as a cultural touchstone for you know tech billionaire. You know, he's like a Tony Stark figure. You know, the fact right. that people say that in conversation is just amazing. <laughs> that transformation over a relatively short space of time is just incredible. Yeah, it's yeah, again, and it's 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 good to be on the right side of that yeah. of that history too. So right on. Uh, I, 
no i agree too and on that note i'd just like to close out on something which is one of the other things you do as an adjunct to your job is is you you uh you have your own website and you do some great uh you, comics history work you're a comics historian yourself but could you could you just uh, share the url of that with 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 us here and talk a little bit about what you do because i find it totally fascinating Sure, sure. Well, that's that's tombrevoort.com. So it's easy to it's easy to to find if you can spell my name, which many people can't. B R E V O O R T. One E two O's. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's not even connected to my work at all. But that's entirely a a, a side hobby. Um, but I write about the comics that I read growing up in the in the order that I that I bought them. Uh, and I write about a, a variety of other uh, comics, uh, history and related topics uh, from, you know, with hopefully my insider's point of view uh, and having a, an editor's eye for, for looking at some of this stuff and working out why it is the way it is or why it worked or, or so forth. Uh, you know, so there's a there's a wide variety of, of material there for people. Uh, you theoretically could get lost there for a, a long while because I spent many, many years, you know, slowly every week adding stuff and, and building it up. Well, mate, I've got to tell you that, uh, I, you know, I was I was a, a journalist for decades, a magazine publisher for decades. The first journalism job I had was writing for the UK comics magazine Speakeasy in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I'm saying this to you as a, as a former comics journalist. Uh, it's one of the greatest pieces of comics history, your website, that I've ever encountered. I'm absolutely addicted to it. So any Forbidden Planet TV viewers who like the vibe and approach of what we do here and what we talk about Forbidden Planet TV are, are you know, are great like pop culture passions. Um, Tom's, Tom's website is and his comics history though is just beautiful stuff totally best in class and worth checking out it's a great read but once you get pulled down that rabbit hole it could be weeks slash months of your life because it's a wealth of brilliant information mate i truly from the bottom of my heart i love it tom i really enjoy it well that again that that, that that's that's very generous of you to say thank you very much i i appreciate it and, and mate it's always great to see you thanks for joining us here at forbidden planet tv thanks thanks and, for having uh, me and please come back on later in the year when you can tell us about some more stuff because I think it's a, we're very excited about 2022. All of the books that Tom has been telling us about, you can order and pre-order from the links attached to this conversation. And take care of yourself, Tom. I'll see you soon, mate. You too. Thanks a lot. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators. Subscribe right here. See you soon.